episode three of the Harvest Chronicles this week. I'm Ben Bredigan, and last week Pat McSherry and myself were out in South Dakota for the 2014 archery opener. And this is one of the trips we were most excited about. Um, there's a lot of big deer roaming around the property, and we were just pumped to get out in the field. Uh, we arrived there, and we were greeted with less than ideal conditions. Uh, we were having temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, which was not conducive to deer movement. But either way, the first night we sat out there, we actually saw quite a bit of movement. Uh, a lot of nice whitetail bucks cruising through this draw that we planned on sitting on. So we saw a number of whitetail bucks cruising through this little draw. Unfortunately, the draw ran southeast to northwest and we were greeted with a nice southeast wind the entire time we were out there, which definitely threw us a curveball. We were not expecting it. So our next plan of attack was to head further up north into the river hills. And what these hills do is they run east and west along the river. And this is prime muley territory. And we had been out there doing a little bit of scouting and saw some really nice mule deer cruising in the area. So every morning and every evening, we'd get up on top of these vantage points and look for deer kind of moving around in these bottoms. And unfortunately, with the temperatures, these deer were not moving. We did, however, see a lot of does and a lot of little bucks. Unfortunately, the big mature mule deer we were looking for wouldn't move until the last 20 minutes of light. And when we were sitting on top of these big hills, looking at them down below, um, you know, we were hoping to get an hour of sunlight before, you know, so we could get down there and get a play on these muleys. But when they're popping out right at last light, uh, we just weren't able to get down in those hills and put a play on them. So uh, one morning we had where it was actually 50 degrees out and it was an overcast sky, really foggy, and we saw a ton of deer movement. A lot of does and again, a lot of little bucks, but unfortunately, we weren't able to put eyes on Mr. Big. Uh, this won't be the last time we'll be out in South Dakota. We'll definitely be out there again looking for a nice muley or a nice whitetail. So as a flatlander coming from Minnesota, every time I go out west, there's always a bunch of things I learn, and this time was no different. Um, there's a few things I definitely would have done differently. So the property would lay out as such. What we had is the river down at the bottom, and then we had river hills with a lot of thick cedars going up to some agricultural fields. And after a few days of glassing, what we found out is a lot of these mature deer just weren't moving during the daylight. What we'd see is the last five, 10 minutes of light, we'd see them pop out. And when we were sitting up on top of these hills, there was no way we could make a play on them. Um, you know, we had a, at least a half hour, 45 minute stock, and with 10 minutes of shooting light left, it just wasn't possible. So what we'd do is we'd sneak down through the draws closer to these deer we're bedding. And we knew they were bedding in a certain area, so we just kind of skirted around that. After that, what we would do is just kind of still hunt. We'd sit, glass for a little bit, uh, get on an upper, a higher vantage point, and just hopefully catch these deer moving through these tiny draws. Um, and instead of having a half hour stock, it'd be only 10 minutes. Uh, in saying that, a boat would also be extremely beneficial, uh, especially in the morning hunts where those deer would either be up in the fields at night and slowly filtering down through the draws right as shooting light would happen. Um, we could sneak around with the boat, get set up and have those deer coming down to us. So I just wanna give a big thanks to Tom and Nova Steinhose Road at Platte Creek Lodge in Platte, South Dakota. They mostly do pheasant hunting and fishing, um, but we were able to stay out there deer hunting and it is just an absolutely great place. They're great people and it's set up nicely for what we wanna do. So next week, we don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing. That's the beauty of the fall. Um, I can tell you we'll either be in the field chasing ducks or again up in the tree chasing whitetails. So I'm Ben Bredigan from In-Depth Outdoors Harvest Chronicles and we'll see you next week.